What's happening everyone? My name is Alan Palander and today I want to teach you guys how I shoot and how I edit. So I got my camera, we're in downtown Toronto, we're going to go and take some pictures. Afterwards we're going to go back to my place, open up Lightroom and show you guys how I edit. So let's not waste any more time, let's hit the streets and get some content. Tie my shoes, man. Dude, look at the difficulty trying to hold the camera. Why are you tying? I can't try to take my camera. To your viewers. Okay, let's go. Two of tying my shoes. Oh, <laughs> nice to meet you, buddy. Yeah, he's driving me a little nuts, but <laughs> Hudson, you behave yourself, okay? Take care of her. <laughs> it's so soft, it's insane. Yeah. What is that, Baba? <laughs> So we got the shots I need, it was a great day, pretty cold, uh, we got a lot of sunlight today which was really nice, Toronto hasn't seen sunlight in a while because of our winter, but before I even go into the post production process I really take into consideration the images I'm capturing beforehand. What I do is I really think about the exposure levels, the contrast, the conditions that I'm shooting in that will make my images look better. So today, because we had a lot of light to work with, I really want to harness that. So whatever subject I had was either being backlit or lit from the foreground. And you'll notice that when I go into the editing process that these are things I really take into consideration and that give my images the look and feel that they do have. So it's getting pretty late, we're losing a lot of daylight. We're gonna head back to my place and I'll show you guys how I edit. You ready? Let's go! So we're finally back at my place. I already got everything sorted out, uploaded the images onto my hard drive and onto Lightroom. Today I was shooting with my 5D Mark III. I had my 35 millimeter on. It's always a great lens to use when you're shooting cities and anything that's really in the outdoors. One thing I do want to talk to you guys about when I'm editing is this uh, palette gear dial set that I have. This allows me to go through my editing process much quicker. Each dial controls a certain feature on the Lightroom process. But we're gonna jump right into this. Um, I already have set up everything. All the images are on my Lightroom and opened up. I've rated the photos that I wanna edit and we're just gonna go here and filter through for the selected ones. So the image I wanna edit with you guys is this image of Toronto's Flatiron Building. It's actually called the Gooderham Building here in Toronto. I believe it's a law firm and there's a bar and a restaurant at the bottom of it. But I like this image a lot because you get a pretty interesting contrast in terms of the conditions there. You have the shadows on the right hand side with a little bit more darker tones. And on the left you have the, the overexposed parts of the image with the rays of the sun coming through. And then you also have a cool subject feature which is this car and the building itself and everything else that's in the image. So the first thing I do when I go about editing my image is actually I transform it first. Just so I know what I'm working with in terms of alignment. Uh, usually level is the first thing I, I click just because it's the easiest. I mean if you want to really work with auto or guided or vertical or full, those are also good options. It depends on the image itself but for the time being level is fine. After which I want to start playing around with the basic controls. So you're dealing with your temperatures, your tints, your exposures, your contrasts and your highlights and so on and so forth. Uh, the dial here controls certain features such as the temperature as you can see um, and then I also have exposures here and then I have the contrast 
And then down here we have the blacks. And up here we have the whites. I uh, also have a before after button. And also a crop button in case I decide to crop. So those are the functions of the dial itself. So I'm just gonna reset so we can start from the top. Now, like I said, first thing is transform level. After which we're gonna play around with the temperature. I usually like images to have a warmer tone to them if possible. Now, because we do have the sun ray here, um, that's something that you wanna really work with and pull out in the image. So we're gonna pump up the temperature to about 8,400. 8400 is fine. So the next thing I do is I work with the exposure level. We're gonna bring that down to about uh, 0 0.2. Um, after which the contrast, you're gonna pull up to about 48 or so. I like my images to have a high level of contrast in them, especially when you're shooting under certain conditions. I mean, this was a sunny day, but if it was a forecasted day and you have pumped up the contrast, you start to really see the definition in the color ranges and the image itself. Um, and then as for the tint, which I did skip, we're not gonna manipulate that too much, but I'll go down to like a minus four to give it just a little bit of color um, in that green section. Afterwards, we're gonna go straight down to the highlights. We're gonna pull back the highlights, not to the very end, to about a minus 92 or so. You wanna start getting the more detail in the exposed areas. And then for the shadows, we're gonna pump that up to about 63. Now you're getting the details that you were losing and initially where there were a lot of shadow areas. And then the whites, we're gonna pump up to about 24 or so. Now you're starting to see the image is becoming overexposed, but that's okay because a lot of the other things we're gonna do later on will, it will really darken certain components of the image itself. The blacks, we're gonna pull them down to about a minus 45. Now you're starting to notice more definition in the darker areas. As for clarity, we're gonna pull back down to about minus 20. The reason I do this is because when I upload on social media or anything like that, I always feel like my images are over, uh, there's too much structure or too much clarity or there's too much sharpness in them. It, this really helps in giving the image a nice silky look to it. Vibrancy and in terms of saturations, we're gonna leave alone. Now the tone curve, this is pretty pretty easy to use. A lot of people um, get confused by a tone curve, but it's not that difficult to understand. So you have your darker tones here and your lighter tones up top on the vertical lines. And then on the horizontal, you have your shadows, your mid tones, and your highlights here. So we're gonna manipulate the tone curve a little bit. We're gonna play around with the shadows a little bit, darken them, pull back so that we can darken certain features of the area like right here. Then we're gonna curve it at the top where the um, highlights are and pull those out a little bit. Pull back the end. So you went from a linear line to something that is a little bit more curvy and smooth. Um, we'll leave that for a time being. If we need to revisit it, we can always come back. The channel itself is RGB. I mean, you can go in and select any of those primary colors and edit them specifically. Now this is where a lot of my color uh, choices come in. Uh, I really accentuate certain colors, especially reds, and I eliminate blues in my images. So here we're gonna go straight into it and start manipulating these hues, saturations, and luminance of each color. The, the red hue I usually pull back to about uh, 41. The saturation I'm gonna pull back to about a minus seven. And the luminance we're gonna pull back to about minus 15. Jump into orange. Similarly, we're gonna pull those back to about minus five, a minus 74. You're really starting to lose a lot of that, um, the orange in the image, but that's okay because we still have the yellow that can work to highlight oranges. Um, and we're gonna leave the luminance at zero. In terms of yellow, we're gonna pull back again so that you get more red hues in the image to about 72 and then you're gonna manipulate the saturation to about minus 18. And then the luminance, we're gonna do not too much, so minus two is fine. The greens, we're gonna pull back again, minus six, or minus, yeah, minus six is fine. Um, I can just punch it in, 
minus six. And then the saturation, we're gonna change to about minus 99. So you're losing all that green. Um, and then you're gonna do a positive one for the luminous. And then for um, your aqua tones, you're gonna do about a plus 10. For the hue, a minus 74 for the saturation and a plus 15 for the luminous. Blues, we're gonna, blues almost get entirely eliminated. So hues, we're gonna leave at zero. Saturation, we're gonna go to minus 100. So you're completely desaturating the blues in the image. And then for the luminous, it's gonna be minus 16. Purples, we're gonna go um, to, we're gonna bring up the purples a little bit in terms of hues, so plus 20. Um, we're gonna drop down the saturation to minus 100 and the luminance to minus 15. The last thing we wanna play around with is magenta color, so you have a plus 30 here. Saturation is minus 100 and luminance is gonna be zero. So once you have your colors edited fully, you can jump straight into split toning. Now, some of my filters have split toning applied to them and some don't. Uh, for this image, we might just add a little bit of split toning to the highlights and to the shadows. So uh, we'll see if we can play around with the hues a little bit. First thing I always do is just add a little bit of saturation so I know what I'm working with. Um, I like to keep my images fairly cool. Uh, while still having those warmer tones in the reds and um, yellow features if, I'm, if they are present in the image. So that should be fine for the time being. Details, sharpening, we're going to drop that down to zero. Uh, every time, like I said, when I upload any of my images anywhere, they seem over sharpened. Now, if I'm printing or doing something else with the image, I will add some sharpening to it. So for the time being, we're just going to reduce that. We're not going to manipulate the noise reduction for this image too much because this was shot during the day, so the ISO level was already at 100. But we're going to move forward past lens correction. I mean, there isn't too much distortion there. Um, past transformation, effects, I don't do any vignettes or anything like that, so we're not going to play around with that area. But grain, this is something that I do apply in my images, so what we're going to do is we're going to boost up the amount to about 20 um, and we're going to do the size to about a 35 or 30, 37 works and roughness we're going to go about 20, 22 is fine. The haze you can leave for the time being, it's a cool feature to use but it's okay for now. So once that's all done, I'm going to look at the image and really think about what the edit looks like. Um, next thing I do is usually I crop the image. If it's going on social media, for example on Instagram, I'm going to crop it uh, to four-fifths. Just like that. And then I decide whether or not I'm happy with the current color ranges. So I do want to work on certain things. For example, the temperature, I'm going to boost up a little bit. And then I'm going to pull back the exposure slightly, give the image a little bit more contrast. Pull back the blacks. And then we're going to use the brush tool here to go in and change certain features on the image. So first and foremost, I'm going to give the building itself a little bit more exposure. And I'm going to pump its contrast and highlight it a little bit pull back the shadows so that it's drawing more attention to the building and we can even give it a little bit more saturation so it pops so when that's done that's cool then we're going to go brush tool again and we're going to try to play around with the warmer areas at the bottom and around the image um, I like to see a contrast between the warm and cool tones uh, last but not least we're going to add a mask to the bottom of the image just to give it a little bit more shadow, just to give it more shade and contrast at the bottom. Um, and pull back the exposure a little bit. And there you have it. So now that I've finished editing this image, I'm gonna create a preset for it and just say new preset. 
2018. Um, and I'm going to drag that to my current preset group. So it's here. I can apply that preset to any of my images. All I have to really do is just pick the image and apply the preset and just manipulate the exposure levels. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to export these two images onto my desktop. I'm also going to export the preset itself and I'm going to upload it on my website for you guys to download for free. Just remember that whenever you're editing an image, you're working with it individually. You're not just applying one filter and that's it. You have to tweak the filters to match the conditions of the photo itself. Usually when I finish using Lightroom, I jump into Photoshop and make any changes if necessary. But for the time being, we're just going to strictly stick to the Lightroom course. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to leave some comments below. I'll be happy to answer some of your questions. and always. Remember Remember to like, subscribe, and comment. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Next week, I'll be sharing some more exciting stuff. So I'll see you then. Peace.